in anything at all uh, in um, in my last review of Arch that that made me uh, think, okay, well maybe we need to rethink that. There were two sets of knit uh, fix PRs that were still pending that I just merged, like during the security con like four minutes ago. Um, and there is one remaining bug on Arch, uh, issue on Arch that was filed by Colin uh, 18 hours ago um, from the train. Um, Colin, do you want to turn that Hello, in train, or, right, or so. shall I? Sorry, sorry for it. Uh, do you want to turn that into a PR or shall I? Um, I I'm happy for you to turn it into a PR. Some, some of it possibly needs thinking about, some of it is obvious. Because like the 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 ones that I've spot checked in the in the like three minutes since I saw this, um, all seem perfectly reasonable and the the um I, I think most of it is is pretty straightforward and it's just you know little things that, that got overlooked and someone comes through and spotted them. We'll uh, pass through these, um, turn them into a PR, uh, and then file a new issue on anything that needs discussion that I don't think just needs to, you know, go into the PR, right? That's the... Yeah, I, I don't think there's too much that needs discussion, although I think there'll probably be a few things. Um, just in interest of time, while we have people in person, Colin, did you want to, are there any particular points that you do believe need discussion that you would like to highlight here if we want to get ahead of that? Um, yeah, let me have a look what's in it. Um, we're, we're pretty good on time, so we may as well yeah. use Wisely. I mean, we've been said and we're done, I've always, right? Yep. Um, Does everybody have the link to the issue that Colin filed? I can drop it into the chat window here. Number 395. 95, yeah. We, do. yeah. We, we should probably just go straight down the list. Yep. Sure. Matter of fact, let me go ahead and open an editor. Yep. It's live. Do it live. 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 You want to share your screen, Brian, uh, so we can watch your time? Hey. Just as yes, I do, but just a second. Um, let me remember. I've spent like I've spent the last three weeks like furiously coding C plus plus on the Tag Island, so I uh, forget how to use Git. Um, so give me a second. And I never learned how to use Git. So. Hmm? I never learned how to use Git in the first place. So. This is why I just put all in one big block of text. Secret. That looks like that looks like it's being pretty reasonable. Uh, uh crap. What's my password? You, you work at Google. You know everyone's passwords, right? Part of you, you are The problem is <laughs> you have so many passwords. How do you remember which one's yours? Exactly. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five. All right. Um, cool. Uh, this looks good. Number is three ninety five. Tommy, if you want to try to get your conferencing system on board, uh, there is a there is an option in the window that says copy meeting link. Mm. You can try see if that gives you something that you can plug into your room system. Where is where is that copy? If you, if you, if you, at the bottom of the window, there's like a bunch of little icons for muting and video and such. Ah, and there's one that's got yes. three dots. Cool. Let me try that. Okay, am I still on? Yes, you are. And we see your editor window. You can see my editor window. Okay. For some reason, I cannot see any of you. Oh, can I move this thing? Okay, now we go. Now we see a terminal window. Oh, there we go. So, 
Section one, first paragraph. <clears throat> Uh, so this one has already been fixed by Phil's PR. Okay. Section 2.1. Yeah, you can tell I was looking at the text. Yeah. Okay. Um, Event driven API. Yes, that one. Oh, yeah, this is fine. Yeah, this just confused me because it's like, okay, some bits are blocking. No, they're asynchronous. No, we're doing this asynchronous. Yeah. Actually, now in. Now the grammar is correct. One fourth para. Much simpler interaction model. Simple case if you don't care about performance. Yeah, maybe more natural. Yeah, yeah. Yep. I find callbacks simple, but they're more natural. What does he work with? Oh, let's talk about framers. Um <laughs> framers. <laughs> This was the last thing left over from um, also from Gory's um, issue, where he was thinking whether it really we should talk about protocols or transport services here. With the framers, I think both is slightly wrong, but I'm not sure what's the right thing to do there. Gory's trying to get the call uh he needed the coordinates reset so uh we might need him we could maybe circle back to this in a few minutes this is 2.2 second paragraph right? yeah we're um what we're looking at right here right so your comment is it seems that um it's suggesting that the applications usually defined frameworks. They usually don't, right? So they don't. It's usually implied by the protocol they select. It's right. So by essentially, the application layer protocol that you're using as a transport will natively support it. So this the the issue is that this goes into too much detail about framers too early. It could be misleading, yeah. It could be misleading. Can we Um, hold on. Did, or do we need to move stuff back? Huh? Like, is, do we need to move any of the text lower down, or is the text already covered below and we just need to get rid of it? We need to do this. I mean, we need to make that go away. Um, there you go. <laughs> and then add it here. I just typed paradigm, son of a bitch. Um, that's not good. Uh, does it this... really belong here, or doesn't it belong into the bullet list above? No, the bullet list above is where messengers are cool. And then we need to talk about um, what happens if you're stuck in, in streamland. But, but what we probably want to say is the choice of protocol implies that there is a framer. And rather than saying you can define framers, it's like the protocol you've picked will imply that there is a framer. And in rare cases, you can define one yourself. So I, I think there's probably going to be a couple different cases. Sometimes your transport protocol, the literal transport protocol, like it's UDP or it's Quick Instagram, will literally have messages, and then you don't need anything. Sometimes you have in your stack something like HTTP, um, which effectively gives you messages and can be viewed as a transport, although it's not always viewed as a classical transport. Yes. And the other cases are you then need to add your own framework. Yes. The typical case is probably that you're using an existing transport-like protocol, like HTTP, for example, and there is a framer implied by that choice if you don't implement it. And the way the text was written, it seemed to imply that you, you as an application programmer, write the framers. But then there's an option to write framers, but usually they're supplied by the stack. Yes. How about this text right here? 
So this is after the, um, everybody can read this, right? this is big enough. Um, some protocols which natively use a stream abstraction, do you mean four protocols instead of some protocols? Yeah. And then you can go down and read about framers down there and then the rest of this just goes away. Yeah. Um, I, I would remove the words application where. Yep. Mm. Uh, yeah, just framers. Taps. We don't call it taps. We call it transport services. But just framers. Just framers. Okay. <laughs> Done. Or actually, do we call it message framers below? No, it's just framers. Yeah, it's fine. Just leave it. Framers. Good. Next. Or four. Which is that? Or do we do? Three, down the next page. Two second paragraph. Two second paragraph. This is just a, a phrasing knit. Oh, three two. Second Where is three two? This is three. It's mm -hmm. One. Two connection objects. What? Okay, fine. Hello, Gory. It wasn't clear what constraint checksums were. Partial check. Uh, so, so we should probably never use UDP light as an example because it just confuses people. Um, we should probably just be partial instead of constrained. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, okay. Does that fix the problem? Um, yeah, I mean, possibly say specify preference to use a partial checksum over part of the packet or something. But if train checksums was not an obvious, it wasn't clear quite what it meant. Go with that. That's good. That's a good change. Yeah, figure four. I guess is this figure. No, that's figure three. Figure four is the lifetime of a connection. Yeah, so this is one that I reworked when I was sitting down with Mary at the interim. That's changed from the one I had yesterday. That's good. Yes. Yeah, and we had specifically not shown send and receive calls, partly because this is named the lifetime of an object, and send and receive calls don't necessarily change your state machine, and it just got way too complicated to read. Right. Yes. Yeah. I mean, so, so the fact it says lifetime of a connection, it is a reason not to have the send and receive calls. It's just that looking at it, most of the things which are discussed in the rest of the documents are on here, except for send and receive calls and, um, I guess, error events and that sort of thing. Messages in their entirety are not on here, and they used to be, and that is very important. Yeah, didn't we didn't we discuss to have a separate separate um, diagram for the send and receive part, or did we even edit? So we talked about that, I remember. Um, and I think when we tried to draw it, like if you just draw a send and receive on a connection, it's a little bit silly because you have like connection with like message, send and receive. I tried to draw this thing like three times. <laughs> but how about how about this ugliness right here? I mean, it also doesn't show the message object at all, right? Which is... I've got a suggestion. I've just appeared, but why don't we just write in the caption we don't show the message? Yeah. Sure. Works for me. <laughs> Do this. This is the your space. Yeah, but that's really ugly. <laughs> I can use it as an SVG, but you know we don't want to delay publication that one. Um, if you make a box around the message and put send and receive on the line, I think it's fine. 
Yeah, but you don't want to put box around it because the rest of the states of you know, yeah, the rest of the state. Rather than uh, but the message, the, the problem the the message is also an object. Get a partial box around it. <laughs> <laughs> you should be on the on the arrow, like the less listen and close and close and all that. You can make it a little make it a little hat. <laughs> Coming as close to literal bike shedding as uh, I have experienced in recent memory. I was just going to say that, but. SD, SDO work is often bike shedding. Like, you got to get the details right. Feels closer to yak shaving to me. <laughs> <laughs> we can have a discussion about whether it's bike shedding or yak shaving. I think it, I think it might be cat vacuuming. Oh. So, we show the endpoints and the properties uh, for the pre connection. So, maybe we can show the message in it. So, this is my. This is my my suggestion. Mm. It's ugly. Mm. It puts a message in a beehive. So this is beehiving. We're not bike treading, we're beehiving. Maybe put message kind of like local and remote endpoint just as a thing and then have the send and receive on the error. Yeah. Would be better. Uh, put the uh, just yeah. up, uh, message and send and Put message up top. Yeah. And I think don't put parentheses around send and receive. Just let them be. Yeah. yeah. Oh, but then it doesn't look like a beehive anymore. Yeah. I mean, can I ask a question? What? What's that? Sorry, Gary, Is it gone. better? Put the send and the receive along the, the arrow. So put them a little bit to the left. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I'm I'm not it's sure. Kind of like listen is next to the arrow. Depends on listen. Oh, you want it next to the arrow? That's what Philip is asking for. I did not understand. I did not. Which is what we do for like listen and close on a board. Yeah, yeah it's it's. Is, are they? Yeah, and they're spaced one off the arrow. Is important. You just we want to have a plus slash less for the message as we do it for endpoint and property. Uh, those are connecting to a line. I know, but do we want to kind of have the same pattern there? I think we would get rid of the rack. We would get rid of the lines and just have message float. Don't you like connection ready? You, you need a V, a point on your arrow, right? You could also have bi-directional arrows, right? I think you should have arrows. This was what I was going to say yes. as well. Just to piss everyone off. There <laughs> 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 we go. We're good. It's fun drawing ASCII out on an interim call. <laughs> <laughs> See, this is how you know we're getting ready for working group last call. Uh, this is. <laughs> this is. I still like the original better. Oh, moving on. <laughs> I agree with Corey, but I can accept this one. <laughs> I, um, I, I also agree, but I think that the, the benefit of having the concept on the diagram is. Even if it's it's okay to have it slightly uglier if it answers the question where are messages. Yep. Easy point to say there are messages. They happen and established. Yeah. And I think the fact that the question has come up multiple times. The transition is less obvious, so I I, I don't like it. Which is why I remove the arrows. Because the arrows are state transitions. No, not because local endpoint is pointing at preconnection. How about this? Oh. The colon. <laughs> oh, here we go. Another line. That's worse. Uh, worse. Okay. 
I would say this is an arrowless. Yeah. And then arrowless line. And maybe stick a plus right there. Properties arrowless. Make it arrowless also onto pre connection. The last bike shedding move message one line down, then I think it's the way. Yeah, move message down one line so it's not hanging out. Yeah, it doesn't look like it's you take established and then you divide by message. Good, I think it's under established. Okay, moving, on. moving on before anybody else has an opinion. Uh, connection related objects. Connections are not connections. Yeah. Just the title of the section. Uh, do we use, we, we use the terminology elsewhere. Document. Um, connections and related objects, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Capital. Uh, probably capital, right? Yeah. Yes. Everything else in this document we capitalize. We do title. Right. Yeah. Yep. Good. One one. Um, all of those can be specified on pre-connection. Yeah, so, so it's, it's the bullet list in connection, in transport properties and connection properties and so on. Yes, yeah, so this bullet list, right? Yes. So selection properties can be specified on pre-connection, connection properties can ah. be changed on a connection. Yeah. But also on pre-connection. can be changed on a connection or a pre-connection or can also be changed. Um, maybe rather than... Would you say they can be specified on pre-connection and changed on a connection? Yeah, possibly, yeah. yeah. They can also be specified on the connection, right? They can be both changed. If they are already specified, they can be changed. If they're not specified, they can be specified on the connection. You can... We not necessarily part and call a specification on the connection a change to the specification. Because implicitly the default had been specified if you did not set it on pre-connection. Okay. I can buy that. <laughs> Phew. Wonderful. Um but message is same for message. Message properties can also presumably default on a pre-connection or a connection. Correct. Just on a particular message. Yeah. Uh, yep, that's nice. But can you actually do that? Yes. That's the the API lets you do that right now. I thought you needed a message to specify this property. You need a message to get the context, but not to specify the property. You can specify you can set the property on the on the pre-connection. Right, like I want to set the everything works as a default on the on messages for that pre-connection. It's not used for selection, but good. Okay. Uh, specifies that a listener is created from a pre-connection, doesn't say connection is created from a pre-connection or a listener. Listener, should it? Uh... Oh. Yeah. They presumably should, yes. What is the verb a listener does to a pre-connection? Uh, well, it calls the received connection event. 
<laughs> or, or received. Oh, or just buy it. Yeah, or just or um, just uh, or by a listener. Connections can be created from a pre-connection or by a listener. Yeah. Fine. Yep. Ah, levels. Ah, and it turns out we already have a uh, we already have a verb generates, which is. Which is in the next sentence, so it becomes clear for it fairly quickly. Right. Yeah. Okay. So it's fine. Um, an endpoint can be specified at various levels. Which the levels is ref is explained in the rest of the sentence, host name and address. But I agree that that may not be an obvious term. Scopes. So, Oops. Oh, level three levels of abstraction. Of abstraction. Yeah. Or by various attribute, uh, attributes. But what you really do is you specify a bunch of attributes uh, for for the endpoint, That's and better. then yeah. yeah. Let's talk about levels of abstraction as opposed to width of scope. And then we very nicely have abstract versus concrete, which is. Okay. Then that's the next the next point from Colin is the exact same thing. We just fixed it. Good. Yeah. Wi-Fi Ethernet connection. Yes. Didn't you know in the future all networks are Ethernet? All restaurants are Taco Bell. Oh, there we go. Done. Connection <laughs> property should be specified in pre-connection prior acceptance. Uh, 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 should we be like are we are we certain about the 2119 language here yeah I, I think we just make it a can All right how many capital maze do i have four i mean i, th I think what we're saying here is you can specify the connection properties on a pre-connection and then you can change them on a connection yeah yeah maybe we should not have any Say can for both of them. Dormay here. But it's not can be modified later because that suggests they can be modified on the pre connection later. Right. So connection purposes are specified on pre connection prior to connection establishment. And be modified on the connection later. Yes. And I would say and rather than but. Yep. Can somebody file an issue to um, scrub 2119 language from Arch? We had done a pass previously. I had gone over that in a fair amount of depth with Corey. Okay. Uh, so we, we, we don't necessarily want to get rid of all of it, but in this case, we really don't need it. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Uh, Form one, two. Changes. Okay, protocol. I can imagine changing All something on the connection that would cause a path to stop working, which would then presumably affect path selection. Mm. You said don't fragment, and that's like you're, you, yeah, you fails. Would be fine with just removing that, and if an application really wants to use this for path selection later on, or implementation wants to do that, it's fine. But I would not expect. Yeah, I would. Working. I would actually drop this as well. I think that this um, this over spec. We don't need to specify at this level in the architecture. It, right. It's something First, that we the important thing is this right here. here. Yeah. Effort, right? The implementation can try. If the implementation decides that you wanted to shoot yourself in the foot and lets you do it, congratulations, you're in C++ land. If the implementation won't actually let you build the code, if you try to do that, then congratulations, you're in Rust land. Um, <laughs> I mean, pr presumably there are properties you could set which would you could successfully set them, but that would then make your path fail. Right. And 
and here I think we explicitly want to say in the architecture, this is best effort. And an implementation may decide that path integrity is more important than application um, preference in that case, or it might make the alternate. The application may not be able to, you know, the, the stack may not be able to tell that changing this property will cause the path to become unviable. Right, but the app, so the question is, is that like, I mean, we're, we're way down in the weeds of why an application might want to do this, right? right. Um, like, so generally, you know, the 99.9% .9 case is you set the properties at, at free establishment time and you're done. Yes. So, like, this is already, you've already kind of broken the glass and you're starting to mess with the innards in a way that, that unexpected things will happen to you. So I think that essentially explicitly making clear that, um, hey, if you're starting to mess around with, with um, uh, connection properties on an established connection, um, the implementation can basically just do what it wants. I think that it, it is important to leave this as undefined behavior. Yeah, I mean, I think just say take effect on a best effort basis makes sense. It's just the last sentence, which I, I wasn't convinced of. Excellent. Uh, look, another framers. Um, Ahead here, haven't we? Uh, yeah, shouldn't we be on? Four point three initiate. Or, no, oh, uh, four point three. Somehow Oops. selected something that was wrong. Right, um, initiate. Yeah, yeah. I don't know why I selected that one. Okay, initiate. Um, do you yeah, so establish local example, states you... such as reserving a local port? Yeah, I mean, it, the example here is presumably things like UDP, which are connectionless. So it doesn't actually so do register the system. system. That's the yeah. Like this? Um, yeah. Or well, possibly for other protocols, for example, UDP, this will just establish local states or something like that. You know, if, if it doesn't do anything and you're trying to initiate, what you're doing is this elicit, not. Because there are so many connectionless protocols that aren't UDP. Um, yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, this is cumbersome. It's like a legal document. I, I, I recognize my own hand in that. that. That like if we blame that, that sentence is mine. Um, this is better. Uh, listeners by default register with multiple panels and protocols. Less constrained by selection properties. Yes. Uh, list so listeners by default register with multiple panels. Uh, I mean, if, if you give a fully constrained and local endpoints, it won't pick one. Yeah. Must be endpoints, endpoints bracket S. Yeah. I was wondering whether to do that. Okay, rendezvous. Yes, this description could be generalized. Can you generate this text on the fly? Uh, or shall we pull, um, shall we punt this to you, Colin? Yeah, punt that one to me. Okay. Can somebody file a, an issue for Colin on that? I can do that. Cool, thanks. Somebody can work GitHub. Boundaries of a message. Uh, 
So we should actually cut all of this text here and replace it with some pointer to framers. Mm -hmm. Or actually just cut it. Let me read what framer says. I think we can cut it completely. We can. Okay. That was easy. Properties can be used to annotate specific messages. Yeah, great. Can be used to annotate messages or to control how messages are sent is actually what the message properties are for, right? Are there any message properties that aren't basically about how you send the message? Well, I mean, it, 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 how you send the message, I think, is broad enough because it, it can include both the things that go on the wire in how you send it and the things that do not go on the wire in how you send it. Um, right, you have like, oh, this right. impacts my timing or my ordering, whereas this other thing impacts the potentially like the ECN flags that get marked on the IP packet. Yeah, I was going to sort of suggest re some restructuring it a little. You know, message properties can be used to annotate messages or can be set on a pre connection to specify defaults to future messages. Message properties might apply to how messages sent, et cetera, et cetera. Then, when receiving messages, message properties contain information about the received message. I'm sure, all the right word. No, it isn't. I mean, I'd like to specify how. <laughs> like, this is what you were arguing for, right, Colin? Um, oh, no. I'm rapping when I'm not supposed to be rapping. That's another thing. Do we want to, like, do we want to actually have one PR that just rewraps all the text in this document? Or do we want to keep... Like the other documents actually keep to 80, 80 columns. This is a different yak to shave, but it also means that all outstanding PRs have to be in and merged and nobody has to have anything branched because it'll break the merge if we, if we reflow. That, that is something we can do At the end. later in the process. Like we can do that during or after working group last call. And the RFC edits can worry about if they care. I still don't like annotate. I think we should start a, a thread on ITF and ITF the log <laughs> Okay, so, <laughs> so, <laughs> um, so Brian, um, these is the annotate. Right. Yes. Oh yeah, well that would be a that would be good to get right. Yeah, I agree with Gory. So they can, uh, yeah, annotate. Um, it can be used to define how specific messages should be sent. Well, or, yep. Uh, uh, there are message properties that are not related to sending, right? So like this is final. Why back to control message transmission because yeah, control message transmission is the superset of all of the things. Uh, not really control hint or. or I mean, you could say you could like, say like specify details about message transmission. That's cool. Right. Because that's what they're doing. So too many specifics. Mm -hmm. They can be specified directly on a message or can be set on a pre-connection or connection as defaults. And get rid of two specified defaults just as defaults. That's also not a May. Cool. Oh, 
and this is now a duplicate? Yes. Good. What is a partial message? It's a partial message, and it's the first time we've mentioned such a concept. Um, well, maybe maybe let's not call it a partial message because I, I think a partial message is less of a noun. Like it's not like it is a thing. You can just send something partially. It, it's more about how you send it rather than what the thing is. Yeah, it's not clear to me that architecture needs to care about partial. Let's or we can just yeah, it's actually it's it's detail. Detail. you can say may the action should transmit a complete or partial message over a connection to the remote system. And you can just say message, and then you can essentially say that a call to send on a partial message followed by all the follow-up calls is one send action. Like at the at the level of the architecture, it's an action, not a method. And it might the be the level of the architecture, you're sending something. Okay. The level of the implementation that may turn into what well, you're sending it in several pieces. Yeah, that's fine. Good. Um, this list is not exhaustive. No list is exhaustive. <laughs> like all lists, this list. All lists. <laughs> Exhausting. Yeah. We should at least be able to say what categories of, of events exist. I mean, it's, it's clearly not going to be an exhaustive list of events, but it should be an exhaustive list of types of events. Right. Well, I mean, the other way to phrase this, which I think is probably the of that line, is just to say implementations can send other events that aren't on this list, but we, we don't even. That is that. common to everything in this architecture. So we yes. actually. So we don't need to. So say let's that. talk about categories of events, not events. Still got the categories of events, not just categories of events. Okay, it then give us a list of yeah. ones. Well, are they really categories? Connection ready? Is that a category? Yeah, there's a bunch of events that relate to the fact that a connection is. Right, now we're okay. I'll cut it down from category to kind. There we go. Following kinds of events can be get rid of that. Or, or great, love it. Does this have errors? Yeah, that's the next. Uh, I mean, next. that was what I was so wondering about when I was reading it actually. And then I thought, oh, it's just categories. Sure, either it's success or fail, and that's like same category, right? Another category. Yeah, so er and error is handled both in. Wait, 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 wait. Error is part of a connection error, is the connection being finished, and a message error is part of, is also described in those specific ones. So. Yeah, that's why I thought is categories are good, because that, that made it make sense for me. Yeah. Still okay with this now? Categories is still okay now? I still don't understand category for, for connection ready and connection finish and connection received, but. So I, I think it allows the API to have essentially a family of specific events for different ways a connection can be finished in. It can be like, I finished with no error. I finished with this kind of error. I finished with that. Right. How about the following events can be delivered to an application? No, because they're, they're not. Oh, because they're, they're not events. They're the, yeah, yeah, right. Sorry, I, I'll sorry, retract it. Groups of related events. It's either categories or kinds, or types. They're not types. Yeah. Okay. Aren't they, aren't they state transitions? I mean, the following state transitions can generate events. Mm -hmm. no, just message received doesn't change the state. Yeah. Received changes the state. The thing that received the message. Entropy of the message is now contained within the receiver. I, I, I don't know if state transitions. It, it, it's, it's 
too esoteric, yes. Yeah. We should argue about categories or kinds. Well, they're, they're also classes of events. Sorry, just to add another word to the uh, <laughs> to the list of possibilities. The, the thing is, is the category has a meaning, class has a meaning, kind has lesser, type has a meaning, kind doesn't have a meaning. Kind, kind sounds awkward in this, in a, in a, a in a normative specification. Sorts of events. <laughs> Sorts of events, yes. Colors of events. Flavors. Events These things. The following, the following things can be delivered to an application. Categories or kinds make a choice, people. Categories. Huh? Categories. Categories. Moving on. <laughs> Soon, but is that long enough? Uh, close. Um, so for half closed connections, and we have gone over this before, I think. So let's see if we still agree. Okay. Uh, this particular notion of closing is not half closed. That half close is expressed via the, in the API via. stream that's different from saying i want to terminate my communication with you so i, I don't know do, do we want to go into the details of half close at this level i really don't want to go into the details no but i read this as su suggesting that you can't half close a connection yeah i think it's it's, it's okay to add a statement that just says that half close connections are not supported well i want to talk about this in the architecture at all, because I think there is a way in the interface to half close the connection by set, uh, setting the connection to unidirectional at a certain point in time. So there are too many ways that potentially could do this. And I think we have to X out this really in the interface and don't talk about half close in the architecture. It's a corner case. So should I basically then like make this less specific? Done with a connection. I don't buy this unidirectional thing, but I think that's nitpicking and I don't agree with unidirectional either, but uh, huh? because because the idea of a half close connection is that it's something you can rely on happening, right? Right. Whereas uh, we can't. Because that excludes protocols that have stricter semantics. Surely this depends on the protocol. Yeah. You can call something a unidirectional connection and nothing will happen. So I guess we are assuming that being done using a connection implies that you can't do any more actions on it, such as sending a receiver. We are, we are explicitly, this language is explicitly intended to resolve this argument by not resolving the argument. I'm making it, I'm making it explicitly um, ambiguous here. Because this language down here very clearly is full close. Yes. And this language the is- doesn't allow half close. It basically says, hey, if you care about the details of half close, go read architecture or go read interface and implementation, which is what they we want them to do. Yes, but the close action doesn't do close. It is a full close. Yeah, I totally agree with that. But if, if we're going to support half close, then we need to phrase this in a way that either suggests that that's possible or say, Half closes using a different mechanism. I, I would be more in favor of saying half, if we want to say anything at all, half close is a different mechanism. For what it's worth, it's different in Berkeley sockets too, right? You have to use a shutdown call to get half closed. Right. right. The, the notion of close is, is, is more of like a, a, an object action saying, I am throwing this thing away. I will never need to use it again. By closing a socket. So how should we resolve the, the reader confusion here? Um, I mean, it, it may be that the that the this is an unfortunate bit of historical terminology. Like somebody decided to implement 
a thing that they then called half closed, which is really not the right way to describe it. We just have to deal with that. It's sending a fit. It's indicating that I have completed my message. And the fact that we have overloaded the TCP's only way of putting boundaries as a way of closing the connection is very TCP specific. Does this, does this added? Do we really have to deal with this issue? I mean, the fact that we define close as a clear close doesn't prohibit adding something else. Well, I, I kind of read this and went, so, so, so this is suggesting that you can't have close a connection. And maybe that's a reasonable thing to do, but it, 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 seemed, it seemed to be implying a restriction without stating it. I mean, I, I agree. <laughs> But I don't, I don't see why that is a problem. I mean, why would we even have to say, yes, you cannot have close a connection or even, even stress it more. I mean, it is it's it's very clear, clear, right? The way that the way it's written. So it, it's, so it's, it's, it's possible to have close a connection and what, you know, whether this was an accidentally ruling out the fact that have close was accidentally yeah, saying or intentionally yeah, saying. In post sockets, we basically said half close is a weird beast and we don't care. That was one of post sockets opinions. And even here, I think our the stance of the way we actually have things written in API is that thing you call half close isn't half close. Stop calling it close. It's just sending the end of a message. I mean, we we could just put a, a sentence here that says um, the the sort of the equivalent of half closed is to signal what end of message or whatever it is. Or, or, or maybe we could just say like this is distinct from indicating the the end of a message upon sending, which can you know send a fin. Yeah, something like that's probably a better way of phrasing it. Say like this is not the close you're looking for if you're looking for half close. Yes, that is elsewhere. But suggest that there is a way of doing half close. Right. To say this is distinct from it. So what's the? Can we not say that in the message part then? Is that when we are talking about these message things? Well, I think if someone reads this, they're going to say that they're going to think the that the, the, the transport services doesn't support half close. Again, I would say it really, really doesn't. Because the minute you start supporting half close, you rule out protocols that have stricter semantics. You can't no. use them, right? And there's no good reason for it. Or is there? No. So, Michael, it it, it does support close. Can we can loop back around on this and find one issue. I can, I can write a text for that. I want to actually get to the end of this PR, and then we can come back to the half close thing. I think. Yeah, let, let's put an issue for this one and come back to it. Yeah. So, next up. Um... Close versus a bot. It's reset versus. Yeah, um, this is intended for. So I think it's so I I I actually think it's clear that one of these is meant for normal and one is meant for abnormal because one's called close and one's called abort. Yeah, but it's again, it's not clearly. So. I mean, possibly just say this is used for ab abnormal connection or something. I mean, even though like there's a whole whole swaths of the web just basically send TCP resets because they don't like state. But... Yeah, but it shouldn't. It shouldn't. Right. But what an abnormal connection termination? That's also a strange. What is an abnormal connection termination? A connection termination that is not normal. <laughs> One that doesn't do a free handshake. 
So I think we actually, we, I mean, the three-way handshake, right? Like we need to, we need to abstract a little bit away from TCP and the architect, right? It's, mm -hmm. the, it's one that like do it fast and I don't care how screwed up stuff gets as opposed to do it right. Yeah. Right. Like one of these is do it right. One of these is do it fast. Abort but might not abort put it absolutely abort, just but... drop like one perfectly reasonable way to do an abort to implement an abort is to drop the memory allocation in whatever the stack implementation is. And then, hey, if you get more packets, then the lower layer um, state machine will just handle it for you. Right. Yeah. So. But then what you're trying to say is that this is a less preferred way of terminating a connection. It is. You yeah. should be not. You should say rather than is abnormal. This is a not nice way to terminate connections. <laughs> why, why, why are we even adding this? I mean, I think it's it's actually, so it's what we are, right? This is possibly me with my I speak English natively add on. I think that it's pretty clear from from close and abort like, which is which. I yeah. agree. And, and yeah. Oh, can we, can we, can we would, the action here is no action? So, so I would agree, except that you, it then defines what, what it means by that. It doesn't, you know, when it's defining what it means, it doesn't say this is a normal close and this is an abnormal close. The extra text was fine. I think it's better without it, personally. Can we make it gray? point of view, this is usually used when you want to immediately close the connection, not hold any state anymore. Great. Yeah, that's something we should want to say. That, that's much better. Well, that is fine. Actually, the other effect that it will have is that, you know, when you get your event for your connection was closed, it will come <laughs> faster when you abort. Yeah. <laughs> Really get a connection close event if you abort. Can we say immediate termination instead of immediate close? Yep. That's better. Okay. Much better. Thank you. Um, pass election. Four two one. So this is going to be four two one. Pass election. That fix it. No. Oh. And I would get rid of the parentheses then if you say any. Yeah, so I mean, candidate, so we got candidate gathering, but path selection and protocol selection are different from candidate gathering. Yeah. If, if you're implementing ICE, you need to figure out what are your candidates, which are presumably your local endpoints, and, so, and that involves you know, stun exchanges and that sort of thing. And then you can you put that into the path selection process. Yes. So do we want to rename this? I, wait, I, I don't. I don't quite see the problem. That seems to include so, so ca candidate gathering is. One of the things which happens before you do path selection. Path selection isn't part of candidate. Yeah, so this is more candidate. I mean, path choice, you know, path selection, or not gathering. In the implementation draft, we basically call the sorting branches, or it's part of that. Yeah, but there's, there's finding the branches before sorting the branches. Yes. Yeah. Different things. Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. Right, so we do candidate gathering and then candidate racing mm -hmm. as two separate steps. Uh, yeah, there's candidate gathering, there's candidate selection and there's racing. So maybe 
a path I maybe uh, path identification. Um, well, so path I guess path selection in this terminology. Well, well, so okay, Brian, if you zoom out to the overall structure of here, yeah, we or we already have two sections here. We have one for candidate gathering, one for candidate racing. Candidate gathering is just identity. Like candidate gathering is merely identifying things. Yes, but that's not what the text says. Right. Yeah. Inside, we then talk about. Okay. There's there's so, conceptually two things happening here. There's all of the things that you could possibly use, and then there's the ones that the application will let you use. Um. Yeah. It, it needs so one more. That can be one step, right? Because the you have one step of. We call it path selection here. It's not selecting the one, it's selecting the set of paths that you are eligible to use based on the availability as well as the selection properties. But if, if you're doing something like ICE, you need to figure out what you need to gather your candidates first before and pass and exchange them with the, your peer before you can do the selection. A, a separate step. Word selection. So, because I think it's selection for what? Maybe it's um, so, what we are the word chosen also. Maybe that should be identifying. Yes, no, right. So, so, just say the act of identifying. It, but I think there are two, there are two acts here. There's there's identifying the possible paths, and then there's winnowing that down into the actual set of paths. And what 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 Tommy is saying is that at least in his concept, those are the same action because in his implementation. They're part of the same action in a well, protocol like ICE. They are not necessarily there are different phases. They are necessarily tempor temporarily um, separated by the mechanics of the of the rendezvous protocol. Um, well, and, and actually, what I'm saying is right. that this section is referring to that first step, not not the winnowing. It is just the gathering. Which is talks about the gathering. selection, which is the winnowing. Selection and selection are winnowing steps. Well, no, that I think we are miss we are disagreeing on what the word selection here means, yeah, which I think is understandable, right? So it is selecting for what, not selecting to use, but selecting to try or to send information about to another peer. It is selecting what is the set of things that I'm even willing to operate on or exchange to the other side or even try racing on. That is what that's creating a candidate pool. So as, that's why is gathering candidates. So how about renaming pass selection into pass candidate selection and protocol selection into protocol candidate selection? Great. Yeah, I would do candidate path and candidate protocol, but yeah. okay. fine too. Yep. Is that good, Maria? And in the later bits of the text, you repeat it. Yeah. Huh? Because it says path selection is yeah yeah yeah. Okay. Okay. We're good. Yep. Cool. Okay. Um, candidate racing. Should we say? <laughs> um. Yeah, I mean, racing just implies that things are running all at once rather than being done in some defined order which might be simultaneously or might be staggered or yeah it's like candidate at yeah it, mm -hmm. it's, the, it's the active part it's the attempts it's, also it's actively the, trying the candidates to see which ones work or communicating with the peer to say hey do you like these yeah it's all of that stuff yeah, yeah. But it's also racing in some sense right because we take the one that comes back first i, I think the issue is that racing here is too specific to one of the parts of what you do, and the, this category should be broader. Yes, because it, it might you might might not be running two of them simultaneously and see which one succeeds first. You might be doing them in a staggered order based on some set of preferences. So just testing. Testing. Yeah. Uh, it, it's. It's more than testing, right? Because if one of them works, you. It and it's no longer a test. This is not a test. 
I mean, selection might be the right word. Can we maybe find a different word for winnowing? Because literally, it's the first time I'm hearing this word ever today. I would not understand what it means. We should not use the word winnow. <laughs> I, th I think of it as uh, maybe qualifying. Sort of. Uh, I mean, selection might be the probing or. It's more than probing. Tried. Attempted. The connection establishment attempts. Because we, when we talk about it, actually, you look in the text we're down. It's like this is the act of attempting to establish or scheduling attempts to establish. Candidate establishment attempts. I want to keep the word racing, okay. um, but I want to make clear that we're redefining what racing means. That's what I'm trying to do here. What's the word they use for like, whatever the right protocol is? But checked for suitability is not good, right? Because that doesn't imply that you also select it if it Yeah, checking and selection. That's, I think, what ICE uses. Yeah, just looking up ICE to see what it is. Yeah, ICE talks about uh, connectivity checks. And, yeah, connectivity checks, checks and then nomination. Yeah. I don't like nomination, but I like checks, checking. Maybe it's a little... Maybe it's the for suitability part. That is a bit strange. Yeah. So does does word racing appear in happy eyeballs? Um, let's see. Are you sure it does? It doesn't appear very nice. Yeah, it definitely does in happy eyeballs. What are the term what are the terms? We already have that RFC. Uh, RFC is 8305. Uh, RFC. How do we like this? We need to remove the word while. And get rid of for suitability. <laughs> Dating, right? Trying and then choosing if it's good. <laughs> so I pride on this TCP connection. You happy with that? A little clumsy, but I think it's better than it was. This is a little bit laziness on my part. You can use racing elsewhere in the documents. I th yeah, I don't. It, it's a little awkward. Like, what does it mean to attempt a candidate? I think it's. And yeah, there's a part of speech problem. Your candidates' connections is like connections to candidates may be attempted. But you're not necessarily going to use the same protocol that you are going to use on the connection. It's not really an attempt. It's more. It's a probe, actually. Like check, I think checking is checking. checking for connect connectivity or whatever. So, and it's not just connectivity; it's also like, does it you know meet the? So this comes back to check for suitability, which is is what I had here. I think. Check for endpoint support and connectivity. What was the first one? Endpoint support. It's not just endpoint support, it's path. Like it's it's like you don't you don't want to specify what criteria the, the system is gonna use. Right? Yeah. 
it's in, to me, like, that it's, there's a step after this to then connect. Right, that's what it implies, which is not necessarily true. For usability. But but again, are we? Are we I mean, it's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> but then, I mean, there are ways to say suitability. We already have suitability. Establishment attempt may be performed. <laughs> but I mean, how wrong is it to say candidates may be checked for a given connection simultaneously without any for there? I mean, like, you don't have to specify that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Mm. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm I'll gonna put this in the CR and we can continue arguing over the thing. Okay, I'll there's... give you a suggested text change there. Huh? Candidates for it's a simple tweak to that because it's like candidates may be checked. It's candidates for a given connection simultaneous. Oh. Yeah. Oh, that's way better. Maybe. No more. Finish later. Yeah, we're good. Done. Moving on. Last one. Oh, we just added a process, which four two four. That's four two three. That's four two. Four. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Yeah. We're assuming a particular operating yeah. system model. Okay. That's that's wrong. Yeah. It's in a memory address space. No. <laughs> No. In a context? We're sorry. We have detected that you're running on a new machine. You can't run tabs. <laughs> um, <clears throat> stored properties documentation such as cache protocol state, cache path state and heuristics may given scope. Oh gosh, that's super vague. This may be shared. This may be shared, yeah. 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 Or, or you share with a practice you have... and give an example of something. Hmm? You could do brackets and EG and do an example of a process. That's okay as an example. Yeah. We do have examples also, like we refer to like the application. You just say, application is maybe shared within an application or across connections for an application or... yeah just say that yeah okay so, i mean for, for this second one you could just say uh which explicitly isolate some connections yeah, I, I think just get rid. Yeah, just it was better with isolate some connections. Yeah. Yep. Cool. Maybe then at the beginning it should not be an example. It is actually the scope. No, because you might actually have like you might have operating system stacks that share some of the cache information across multiple applications. Right. Like you could have the connections being made in a separate daemon process that is actually managing all of them. And no, no browser manufacturer will touch that and they will do their own isolation, but um, like the rest of the world. This is also completely open-ended now, right? You run this and your statistics may be shared. In however big scope. Possibly it's something will implement something like that. I mean, can, can we just start this section by just saying you know, by default properties may be shared, full stop? I, I like the example. example. Okay. Okay, we are done and we have two new issues filed. See how long it's been since I've rebuilt on this machine. 316.1 days. <laughs> that doesn't seem, oh no, yeah, no, I usually do stuff on my, on my work laptop now. Send out a PR for this? I'll send out a PR for this. And Colin and I can send out PRs for the other. Yeah. Yeah. If I can figure out how to do PR, I will send out to PR. Better <laughs> <laughs> yes. homework. You can also just paste text into your uh, issue. Yeah. 
It's actually super easy. What you can actually do here, let me show you. Um, you can get up to. Let's front and push the right button that says create a PR. <laughs> yeah, it's a traditional professor thing, and that's one of my students. So can, can we talk a little bit about schedule? Yeah. Let's talk about schedule. So easy call. Um, yeah. you know, I, I can figure this out. I've done this. Click on the doc. There's a little you can edit this file. And then you change the file. And then down at the bottom of the thing here, um, you want to see create a new branch and start a Oh, that's far too easy, right? I'm not sure it can't go wrong. It can probably really go wrong, but we'll fix it. Please don't commit directly to master. Okay. So, Aaron. Yes. So, um, everybody take a look at your calendars. Uh, that, that's, that's a different machine. Doesn't surprise me. Um, so our next, I would like to complete last call for our next uh, conference call, which is scheduled for January twenty fourth. Um, you know, we've got the holidays, which roughly wipes out the next two weeks, um, but I am. So when, I wanted to just see, uh, see whether folks had an opinion about starting the last call over the holidays, or uh, we could wait until like the second or third uh, to do it. I don't think anyone's going to do anything if you do stuff over the holidays. So. I think, I think we it, start the last call on like the third or the sixth. Okay, so if we start on the sixth and we give people two weeks. Um, yeah. So I mean, if we think it's ready, we might as well just start it and make it longer. Well, so we, we, we always been encouraging people to be working over the Christmas holiday. Yeah, well, we have both of these well, that's when they have time to do ITF stuff. I mean, it's <laughs> so so we need to land both of the or all three of these PRs then by Monday, right? If like realistically, I don't know. Is any who's working on Monday? Um, I'm. I'm working, I'm on call for work, so, um, so, so no, but to the extent that I am, it will be writing lecture notes. Um, yeah, I, I will do the PR I have over the weekend. Yeah. Okay, cool. Okay. So yeah, we, we could, I'm going to cover this on PR and submit quick, and then the half close thing will be quick too. And then we can, we can turn the crank on Monday, I think. I, yeah. So I, I think that's good just because I think people are going to, if it requires any discussion. Uh, for these PRs, people are going to start disappearing. So I think that's really good. But I, I think I think our goal should be to land the PRs that we have as we have them, and then anything beyond that is a last call comment. Yes. I mean, the issues we have in the PRs now are quite small, right? It's yeah, yeah. those are easy things. So maybe this is small thing that like we will get in the last call. They're not so small that we were able to resolve them on the call, though. So. That's because they just need a little bit of thinking about what's text is. They're not yes, exactly. You said... <laughs> I don't think they're controversial. Okay. They would have been appropriate as last call comments as well. Yes. So, uh, how? What do you think of this idea? Suppose we start uh, uh, do start last call on the thirtieth. Um, uh, that way, we don't lose the ent that entire week. Well, I'm a little concerned. Well, we lose the entire week anyway because no one's at work. Whole week? I don't know. Everyone's yeah, gone. On the six. For, at least in the UK, everyone is gone from now until the sixth of January. Yeah. <laughs> yep. We get, we get time off here. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah. The, uh, and the last one in the building. The department closed a couple of hours ago. <laughs> okay. We'll start. We'll run last call from the sixth through the seventeenth. Um, and. Um, I'm a, I'm a little con I, I'll tell you I'm a little concerned that um, <coughs> nobody with enough energy to give this a review who is not on this call and already like deeply in it I, I you know I would love to have some fresh eyes look at it in uh, in the working group last call but um, 
It is what it is. Want to crush Iser and it has to go to IETF last call. Yes. Well, that's I want to get there, right? Um, okay. Uh, fair enough. So we'll do that. Um, uh, where are we on uh, on the interface? I haven't looked at it in months. Um, no open issues on it. Okay, so it needs a. It, it, no, uh, there's one open issue on it. Here it is. Uh, there's, there's, a there's, there's, a few issues. Issues. there's also we need privacy considerations updated. Yeah, yeah, but that text is for implementation now. We should relabel that. Oh, we should relabel. Okay. The framers. The framers text is for implementation. Three forty. Yeah. Good. So that fixes an API issue without even touching the text. That's awesome. And then we do need a privacy consideration section. One thing we do. Uh, do we want to do we want to assign this to someone other than Chris Wood? Just to uh, call for Chris. He was on earlier. I think he had to go. Okay. Can you ping him in person? Yeah. He, yes. He he is flying this afternoon. But okay. So can you report? Hmm. Go to the airport, put a laptop in his hands. <laughs> you can do it on there. Here's an idea. Can uh, I think that uh, you know Colin's close read super helpful, right? I think that gave us a chance to really go through a lot of details here to feel confident that it's ready for working group last call. Um, it would be nice to do that for implementation before our next call. If uh, some implementation or interface. Um, I, I, interface. Interface. Yeah. I, I think that will be difficult for me before the end of January to commit everything else I have. Planning to do this for the API document until today. I didn't succeed, but it's still on the top of my to do list. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm planning on doing it, but it's unlikely I'll get to it by the end of January. My original idea, or at least the original idea from, from Singapore, was that the, this was going to be the architecture call, and I think it was, and I think it worked really well. Uh, and then the next call was going to be the, the um, interface call. Uh, and I think if we get like one or two good reviews in on that, and we can have sort of the same kind of discussion on interface that we had on, on architecture today, then we can turn around and like on the 20, right? Like, so the scheduling is weird for this call because like, this is the last thing some of us are doing, right? Um, like if we do the, we can basically start the last call on the 24th, right after the um, on interface. The interim, we can we can start the interface last call. Yeah, I think that's tight. But yeah, I also uh, so so my thinking is exactly along the lines of yours, Brian. But uh, um, w what I want to do is get a couple of people to commit to do a close read. And it sounds like Colin's not going to have time before the call. Maria will do it. Um, is there somebody on this bridge who's not an author who can um, sign up to do a close read of the document before the 19th of January? I will. <laughs> I am not an author. I will read it. I will read it. Thank you. Uh, okay. That addresses my anxiety about because what I don't want to do is uh, have a whole bunch of stuff, have you know multiple emails like Collins come out of working group last call because then it's going to take a lot of work for us to you know to get the revision done when we want to be turning our attention to the implementation document. So this is good. This works for me. So uh, Kyle, Max, Mary, don't not do it because you're an author. <laughs> Uh, so, do we want to um, we've accomplish everything that I'd hope to do on the call since we are gathered and we have another 30 minutes? Is there anything about the interface doc that it's worth discussing now? Or um, should we just close early or talk about the implementation doc? So, I don't think there's anything to discuss on interface until we get two more close reads. But if we want to take the time for implementation, I can stop sharing.
Um, I think we're also. So the oh, question, the, the issue I raised about um, the how to organize the um, per protocol, hopefully normative behavior at I raised that in Singapore. Should I actually open an issue for that? I don't know if we, I don't see an open issue for that. Yeah, so should I open one? Uh, well, sure. I just mentioned Thank it, you. yeah. Yeah, please. Mm. Tommy, were you trying to say something else? Oh, um, the, I, I was just looking at what the issues were for implementation. I don't think there's anything particular we should discuss. There's a bit, there's a couple things that are ready for text and need some input there. Um, I think there is one that is assigned to Gory, one that's assigned to Max. Um, I guess it would be good if people do have time um, to any to do any issues that they do have assigned to them for implementation prior to the next call, just so we can make sure we're starting off with a relatively clean slate. Yeah, and, and identify if there's anything that requires discussion. Yeah, I think right now there's nothing that's like a large discussion point, but if people do have thoughts, um, for example, like the one that Jonathan brought up, having mm -hmm. for it sooner than later will help us process that and triage that. Well, I think this has been a super productive call, and I think that we should declare victory. Yeah, Aaron, before we close the meeting, uh, can you summarize what was said about the security draft? Also, Sagona. Uh, I mean, I started the recording a bit later, so just for the record, I mean, if somebody listened to this one. We're going to open some issues on the remaining comments, and then we're going to assign them to like authors, and then work on those in like early January and then we didn't say that but hopefully get a re revision ready in January right yeah okay so the revision ready by January okay no, not by January in January in January okay. let's let's aim for like first couple weeks of January yes have the revision out um, and then we should be good to go okay great sounds good all right. Well, thanks, everybody. Um, have a great holiday, and um, we'll uh, see you in a few weeks. Thank you. Bye. 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 Happy holidays. Happy holidays.